PTC ArborText IsoDraw is a 2D vector drawing tool that has the capabilities to bring in 2D raster, 2D vector, and 3D sources for the purposes of creating two-dimensional vector or 2D raster output graphics. Um, some basic capabilities of the program would include a full suite of drawing tools, um, as well as the ability to work with and create perspective isometric drawings, as the name implies. Um, Arbortex IsoDraw also has a macro language, which can be very useful for um, automating or recording tasks that are commonly done. Um, for instance, file conversion would be something that the macro language um, could do on illustration files um, or processing illustration files. Um, today, I'd like to show a brief demonstration overview of the tool set. Let's begin our demonstration with a sample file that highlights the drawing capabilities of IsoDraw. So what we have here is a cross section of an engine, and this was created using just the drawing tools in IsoDraw. Um, so everything we see here was created um, by hand in IsoDraw using the drawing capabilities. Um, so at taking a look just through the menus here, um, we have our palette of tools. Um, IsoDraw includes specialty tools for um, things like drawing of threads. We also have a projection tool from working from one plane of perspective to another. Um, and some rotational tools here as well for making arrangements or layouts of, for instance, holes or features on a part. Um, but this drawing here highlights some of the capabilities. Um, one interesting thing is, for instance, even the text here, it was drawn using um, paths and curves. So uh, IsoDraw certainly does include a text element tool, um, but in this example, they went all out and did everything by hand using just the drawing capabilities of IsoDraw. Um, we can see here, for instance, if we turn on and off some of these layers, we get a feel for how this was actually drawn. And we can actually go into the line drawing mode and see some of our constructions and layout lines as well. Um, so right now in this drawing, my grid plane that I would, if I wanted to do some drawing, would be snapped to the um, this orthographic perspective from the camera's view. So if I do any drawing, you'll see that will come in as a um, perspective fixed perpendicular to our view that we're looking at the computer. Um, if I go to my grids tool, my other default grid would be a 90 degree ortho orthogonal isometric view um, to my CAD parts, um, or, or sorry, my engine parts that we see here. Um, so in this tool set, in IsoDraw, if I grab my lines that would make up the 3D projection of this part uh, in, or the grid alignment of this part, so I grabbed a, a front facing line and a side facing line. If we come in and, and go to my new grid tool, um, this pops up and it will automatically find the correct perspective. Um, so now I have a, a grid at the correct alignment. And what that will allow me to do is the next time I draw a rectangle, instead of being um, isometric to my screen, it will now come in um, in the same plane or perspective of my drawing. Um, so that makes the tool set here very friendly for doing, as the name implies, isometric drawing um, within a fixed perspective. Let's start with a um, maybe a new file here, and let's explore a little bit the 3D import capabilities of IsoDraw. Um, IsoDraw has the ability to bring in um, raster images, vector graphics, and also three-dimensional objects. Um, so I'm going to place this object within my drawing, and what that was doing is I'm creating a link to this source object within my illustration. As this comes in, um, IsoDraw is going to recognize this is a Creo View format, so that is a PTC lightweight CAD format, and it's going to give me the opportunity to explore that CAD structure and select which subassemblies or parts I would like to bring in. Um, also here within IsoDraw would be a capability for creating regions of the graphic that would be selectable um, or hotspotted. So we'll, we'll leave this as no hotspot, but we'll explore the CAD file assembly. 
Um, and again, we are going to look at the data contained within the assembly file. Um, so here's my PVZ input file. If I expand that, we can see here are all the parts and assemblies that make up this CAD file. Um, again, this is generated in this example from the CAD system. So we'll select all of our components and bring those into IsoDraw. If I zoom out, here is our CAD model um, that has been placed, and here is my work page. Um, and if I look here in my objects window within my standard layer where I place that, here is that CAD assembly, and as I expand that down, we are going to see the exact same structure um, that we were just looking at, and that was the menu command we were just performing. Um, these parts, if I select on one, and I ask it to show me where that is, um, I can find it quickly and easily within my structure, and then just like a layer, if I wanted to turn parts on or off, I can do that here. Um, so let's do a little bit of uh, illustration. Um, you'll notice that my palette of illustration tools has been disabled, um, and that is because I have brought in a 3D source object and I need to position this and then flatten it into a 2D projection. And once I'm back in the 2D mode, then I have my full drawing capabilities. So right now we're in the 3D mode. Um, we have our three dimensional tools available to us. And then once we go back into the 2D line drawing mode, then I will have my full palette of line drawing tools. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put this model into an isometric um, orientation. Um, that will make it simple for me since I have a, an isometric grid on my drawing. Um, so my parts can snap to that and I can later on draw other um, content within the same projection. Um, another thing I will do is I'm going to select the Y axis by hitting the Y key. Um, that will put me uh, or lock my model around that Y axis and I can do something, say, like a rotation of my model. I'm hitting shift click here to bring up my, my dialog box that lets me specify a 90 degree rotation. Um, I will switch over to um, my Z and X axes um, to do my part explosion. So if, for instance, if I wanted to take off this front coupler, I can select that and as I drag that, it will snap to that Z or the X axis and this or Z axis or the X axis if I wanted to. Um, so to do something like create an exploded view, um, it's quite simple. I can select multiple parts. Um, we can switch our axis back to the Y axis, say if I wanted to bring out this bolt. Um, I could also come in here and this plug is in neither orthographic projection. Um, so uh, IsoDraw here would give me an ability to um, look at this part and find the axis that it is inside of. Um, and then I could come and we are now locked into this angle and I could drag out, say, this O-ring and, and, and maybe the plug. So for now, let's say this is a good projection. I'd like to start working in my 2D mode. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to flatten this 3D object into a 2D source projection. Um, and so I'll, I'll convert this to 2D illustration. Um, and then my options here will come up. So I can create just a shaded image. I can also create a hidden line removed drawing. Um, and when it generates this, we can see the preferences that it is going to go through. Um, so IsoDraw will automatically create a stylized thick and thin line um, preview mode. I can choose my pens. Um, I can also choose how the program is going to look at the 3D data and convert that into a 2D vector output. So we'll go ahead and flatten this into 2D. Um, this will convert into line art and then we'll see here is my palette of tools has now reappeared. Um, so let's move this back onto my work page. So now we, we are working within my, my work page. Um, and if I wanted to say draw an exploded line now to reference that, I would select my line tool. I can come over to my line styles. We could select a center line and then I can grab the middle of my part and extend this out. Um, so here is my explode line. And then um, just using the drawing tools now, I would come in here and say, let's trim this line. Um, or, or we could maybe do a, a, um, a more specific trim using this command and we'll trim that around the, the part boundaries. And I would have my full drawing capabilities. 
um, available to me. Now, let's say maybe I wanted to explode this washer and I forgot to do that. Well, our part here, our graphic is still actually linked back to the 3D source data because we placed that within our um, illustration. So if I look at this file that we placed, we can see here that it is actually looking for updates to this source material. So as this file updates, I can have it update in IsoDraw even within my 2D projection. It'll go back through that process of going from the 3D to the 2D um, and, and any new geometry would then be updated here in IsoDraw. Um, I also have the ability here to say, just within my drawing, I can put this back into the 3D mode. And if I wanted to say move some parts or I wanted to explode other parts, I'm now back in that 3D mode. So let's say maybe this cover, oh, wrong part there. Let's, let's grab this cover and we'll turn that one off and maybe my washer here, I, I wanna bring up as part of my exploded view. So it'll preserve my changes here. I can then go back into my 2D mode and continue my drawing. Um, the, the palettes and tools that we have are also configurable um, or customizable here in IsoDraw. So for instance, a line style here, um, if we wanted to, I can edit this in terms of what type of pattern or the spacing I have. Um, things like call out styles um, with a line and a number um, are also very configurable as is everything here in IsoDraw. Um, so everything from the type of text to the size, to your line, to the shape of maybe the call out that we would like, um, we have control over that here in, in IsoDraw. Um, the last thing I'll cover um, for our brief overview would be um, IsoDraw also contains a, a wide library of um, line art. Um, so for instance, um, we can see different default perspectives of um, all kinds of different things that you would have here, and you can add to this library as well. Um, so this is just the default library, um, but again, you can use the perspective tools to um, edit and transform these, um, but they will come in as line art. Um, and then from here, you would have the capabilities to, to work with and, and draw in, in an isometric fashion here in the tool set. This concludes my IsoDraw overview. Thanks for your time.